last year, don't they? You must be really jealous. I'm incredibly <laughs> jealous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, when you've got the boat race, you say anything can happen, but when it's water like this, it's really every athlete's dream to row on. And, and Maddie, for, for, the, for the rowers, you've done a warm-up of how long so far? I mean, how are your muscles feeling? So normally a warm-up would be around 40 minutes. Um, you gradually build it up. Um, and they'll have done some pieces at race pace at this stage, so they'll have a little taste of what it's going to be like, and they'll be really ready and raring to go. Would you rather right now be in that boat or rather be on the side watching? I'd love to be in the boat right now. Um, <laughs> I, I've always hated this bit at the start where you sit and wait, but as soon as the buzzer goes, it's an, it's an incredible feeling. Well, it is nearly time for the women's boat race. Can Cambridge win it for the first time on the Tideway or will Oxford be victorious once again very shortly? You're going to be hearing our full commentary team. Kath Bishop will be in there, Zoe de Toledo as well. Uh, Wayne Pommen is out on the course and leading the way is Andrew Cotter. Thank you very much, and what a day it is, and look at the crowds lining the Fulham Wall and creating the next for a view down from Putney Bridge and on the Putney Embankment down to the bottom of your picture, and they sit there, the two crews, for what must seem like an age, and they have been sitting there for a good few minutes before we first looked at them, and these are the moments of real tension, where they wait and wait and try and gather their thoughts, and chatter comes from the two coxies. And we are moments away from the 72nd edition of the women's boat race. Doesn't quite have the history of the men's event, but here they line up and get ready. Umpire Sarah Winkless. And the Coxes will make sure that uh, they are showing that they are ready or not. Hand up if they are not ready, which you see now from the Cox of Cambridge, Matthew Holland. So he's ready now. So to Oxford, Elna Shearer's arm is down. A simple instruction to begin the 72nd women's boat race, and you can see on the Middlesex station there that there's a dreadful start. A dreadful start. It looks like there someone's caught a crab in the Oxford boat, and that could be. Well, that could be it. At the beginning of the race, Oxford could have lost it with a start. They practice and practice these starts, and it all went horribly wrong. And you can see the lead that Cambridge have in Surrey already. Cambridge, the favourites coming into this, but nobody expected that. In the opening moments, a lead of three, four lengths already. And is there any way back now for Surrey? It's so much harder starting on the tideway. They have to sit with their blades actually facing the wrong way and scoot them around. So it is much trickier. They will now have a real surge of adrenaline as well in the Oxford crew because they'll be trying to restart, get back up. So they're going to be really hearts pumping in that Oxford crew. But of course, for Cambridge, very comfortable. I mean, this is, uh, in terms of how you expect and plan for the start of a race to go, this is the stuff of nightmares for Oxford on Middlesex. Uh, Cambridge, a long, long way clear. And uh, they mustn't be complacent now. They know they've still got to push on. But uh, Oxford have say all to do they have far more and look at the leaders they come past the Putney boathouses look at the lead that Cambridge already have just such a shame for Oxford there as you said Cambridge the favorites but that's not the way you want to start the race and you know they're going to give themselves a lot to do now to to try and stay in this with Cambridge well, Wayne Palman is down on the river watching and now uh, Wayne you'll have been as shocked as the rest of us to see that start for Oxford Oh, that was just inc incredibly disappointing. The Oxford four seed catching a crab right off the start. And Oxford were underdogs in this race to begin with. And to start like that is just a horrible thing. Honestly, being here behind the boats, I wish they started it over so we could have a clean race. But sadly, it's not to be. And, and you said it, Andrew, they've got a heck of a lot of work to do to get back in this race. And, and this is going to be very disappointing for them and for Cambridge, who wanted to see a, a good, clean race. Well, a huge test for uh, Oxford Moore from Wayne throughout the race, a huge test for Oxford, and I think in particular for their, their Cox, Eleanor Shearer, like so many in the Oxford boat, a little bit unexperienced in, in boat races, racing on the tideway, but she has to try somehow to lift this crew. Yeah, it's going to be tough because, of course, they will have lost some focus in that. People have thought, what the hell happened? And they've got to put that behind themselves. They've got to focus in. It's a head race now. 
Yeah, from a Cox's point of view, it's such a difficult thing to do because obviously you can see the crew in front and you need to keep your crew motivated, but at the same time, you can't tell them that you're right next to them because they'll know they aren't. Well, let's uh, have a look at the start because there's obviously a huge lead there for Cambridge and this is how it happened, right on the start. This is where it went wrong for Oxford. I'm watching a replay of the start and see what happened. Yes, yeah, so you can see the, the four seat there. Rebecca went very deep on the first stroke and easy to do. It is a really difficult thing to, to start on the tideway with the stream rushing past you and with the adrenaline, you know, you're just going to be really, really uh, stressed about it and really tense. That was extraordinary. I've never seen that in uh, men's or women's races. Again, you saw the little tilt of the boat and as you said, the, the oar went in so, the blade went in so, so deep. And uh, from there, they're struggling. The lead is, uh, if anything, ex extending slightly. And Oxford, there'll be a, a sense of desperation, and they mustn't chase it too much in the early stages and spend all their fuel. I mean, hopefully, Eleanor can really take control and say, look, the start didn't work. But the thing is, this is a long race, and they've got to get into their rhythm, and they've got to go hunting after Cambridge. It's a different mentality now, but they've got to get their speed maximum, relentless rhythm, so they can go stroke by stroke and try and hunt Cambridge down. But of course, it's so much tougher. And for Cambridge, they've got opportunity to relax. Look at that rhythm. They are such a strong crew. You just hear the Cox is giving the instruction. That's Eleanor Shearer and uh, Matthew Holland coaxing for Cambridge. And as you look through that uh, Cambridge crew, as Kath was talking about it, stroke Melissa Wilson racing in her fourth boat race, Miriam Goodey raced last year, Alice White, Holly Hill, Great Britain internationalist, Anna Dawson, Claire Lamb, Imogen Grant, Ashton Brown in the, the bow seat, it has that experience and uh, well, it's difficult to see any way back for, for Oxford. He already had a 10 second lead Cambridge. They have immense experience. This is such a classy crew and it's such a shame in a way that, that they weren't kind of given that proper test out the start. But I mean, they've still got to put it down. They're going to be wanting to get a great time. They're going to be wanting to increase that distance every stroke because they've had a tough few years. They haven't won since 2012. So they are going to want to show what they can do. And the crowd that we caught a glimpse of them waiting near Hammersmith Bridge and all the, the pubs there, they'll be uh, stunned to see the lead that Cambridge have. They won't know what happened at the at the start, but they're a look down the, the boat, Ashton Brown in the bow seat, how different to last year when the waves were crashing over her in the second half of the race and the president leading her crew at the moment and uh, through, through actual and uh, metaphorical calmer waters this year, but uh, in total control at the moment. Matthew Holland just uh, driving them on again. It's uh, Cambridge is our rhythm as we come round the bend now. The challenge for the next three minutes is to hold the split. I don't want you to drop it. I want you to hold it. No, so they're racing themselves out here. They are want to show what they can do. They want to set that standard. This is one of the best crews that we've seen in the boat race. And so they are out there. They're trying to hold their splits. So they know how fast they're going and they don't want to let that come off at all, even though they haven't got a crew beside them. That's what the standard is that they are trying to set. Well, it's interesting, Kath. We were looking at the trophy before the race and uh, you see engraved in there, not just who wins, but the winning margin is at 25 lengths for last year, which was obviously rather uh, inflated by the conditions. But that will be in the back of the mind of the Cambridge Rose to make amends for that and get as big a margin of victory as they can. Absolutely. They want to avenge that. They want to avenge the fact that that trophy only has Oxford's name on it for the last three years and get Cambridge's name and get a good distance. Cambridge have named their new boat this year, Venet Lux, which, if my Latin is correct, I believe means the light comes. And it looks like that was quite a choice name. Exactly. They felt they've been sort of in the dark the last few years, been struggling, trying to rebuild, to create something really special. And they had that feeling that we're coming out of the dark period when there have been a run of losses and the light is coming. Again, just an idea of the size of crowds out here for this race and for the, the men's race to come. And again, they're draped over Hammersmith Bridge, which is only open to spectators for the race a few years ago. Again, it used to be closed off. But this is one of the noisiest parts of the course as well, because of all the spectators above them now as they try and shoot through uh, underneath the second lamppost from the left. That's the line of the quickest water. The, the deepest water is the quickest water as the tide comes in and Cambridge so, so far clear at the moment as they all watch and we can see Oxford in the far distance there still to come under the bridge 
and the gap, if anything, continues to stretch just a little bit. And let's be clear, we've got a boat here with some future Olympians in it. We've got girls who learnt to at Cambridge and who are now doing well at GB Trials. Uh, Win Pommen continues to watch down there and continues to watch a, a, a dominant performance by Cambridge. Well, it really is. They really are now looking like the crew that everyone said they were. Very long, very together, very strong. And of course, it's not so hard to do that when you've got a lead of as many lengths as they do. But, you know, I think probably they would have won anyways, but it's just a shame we didn't have a closer race for longer. Well, now the uh, bend starts to play out around to the left as we look at it there, around to the south-southwest, and it will favour, well, I was about to say it would favour Oxford, it would if they were actually racing and almost side by side, but Cambridge can choose their water, so there's no advantage here for, for Oxford, no real chinks of light to, to cling to, and uh, it's, it's so calm compared to last year as well. Sometimes you get through Hammersmith Bridge and it turns around different direction and the wind whips up the water, but a beautiful shot as we look down on Cambridge, so far clear in this boat race. You can see how supreme they are, the space, the, the amount they're clearing from one set of strokes to the next set of strokes, the amount of run that boat has in between strokes. This is a quality crew. Melissa Wilson, who's stroking it, learnt her at Cambridge. She's lost three boat races, so how sweet must this feel to her? There's Melissa leading the way, and she's going to be a bright star for Great Britain in the rowing team she's been in, the under-23 team, and she's got so much talent and potential leading the way. It'd be a great feeling for her, full-time lucky, hopefully. Yeah, she teams up with Holly Hill uh, internationally, sits in the 5 seat for Cambridge, uh, Hill who raced last year as well in the blue boat, and Miriam Goody in the 7 seat, and Ashton Brown in the bow seat. Those are the returning blues, those who are, are those who have experienced the, the, the defeat last year, the painful defeat last year, but again, just a stunning shot of this sweep of the Thames as we look down in Cambridge, so very far clear of Oxford, who must try and dig in and find something, but there comes a point when you know, and your cocks will try and lie to you and say that, you, you know, you're we're closing or we're hanging in there, but they will know how far behind they are. I think you have to be positive. You can't just sit there and say, oh yeah, you know, you're getting obliterated by another crew. That's not something you can do. But at the same time, you, you do have to be realistic. And she'll probably be saying, you know, let's keep chipping away at it. Let's keep working back. And at the end of the day, let's not forget in the boat race, anything can happen. And last year is a prime example of, of what can, what can be thrown at you so you can't give up until you get to the line because you don't know what might happen down the course all great shots of the crew and down in the bows we've got Imogen Grant who's winning the battle of the medics so there's a medic in the two seat of both the Cambridge crew and the Oxford crew and Imogen learned to go at Cambridge and is a fantastic lightweight rower who again is starting to make her mark at under 23 trials so we're seeing so many faces here that I think we'll be seeing again well, it's a painful work for uh, Oxford at the moment, painful for both crews, but at least Cambridge have this salve of being a long way clear and knowing, really knowing that they're heading towards victory. We're well past halfway now, and there's still some distance to go, but Cambridge know that victory is coming, and the last four years have been wins for Oxford, and last year in particular was, was horrible for those in the Cambridge boat, but look at that, such a different tale. I think the Oxford crew, you know, they knew they were underdogs and they had a really strong team atmosphere within them and they really wanted to make sure that no matter what the media was saying and no matter what the odds were, they were going to go out there and put in their best performance. So, yeah, as you said, such a shame to see that start, but there's no way these girls are going to give up. They're tough and they are going to be on it every stroke from here to the last. They've got pride, they've got their dignity. They will want to show how well they can row regardless of the start. And they have to show that now. And so Matthew Holland tries to whip them on. And a very, very uh, placid waters down uh, Chiswick Reach. And again, the bend continues to sweep around towards the uh, south-southwest. Oh, the gap of air, I don't know if it's opening any further. I'm trying to offer some crumbs of comfort to Oxford, but it is a, a dominant performance by Cambridge. How different it might have been if uh, Oxford had a decent start, we just do not know, and that's really the sad thing about this race. I think it's a shame because Oxford also had the benefit of that first bend, which would have given them, you know, about a, a quarter to a third of a length on Cambridge and hopefully would have, you know, would have given them a bit of impetus at the start of the race. Well, it was Rebecca Eselstein, the American in the four seat, who got in all sorts of trouble at the start. Uh, and she is the least experienced 
roar out there, at least experienced oars women, has great numbers on the, the air, but that quite often doesn't translate it. I mean, that was an extreme example of it, but she got really caught out at the start. I mean, it's, a, it's a team event, and I think these things happen as a team. The balance probably rocked in the crew, and the whole crew is responsible for that. So, I mean, it happens to be her blade, but it could have been another blade if the balance had gone off the start, as it seemed that they suddenly lurched as, they, as the caller put the flag down and they do seem to be holding now you know they're not going to want no matter what they're not going to let cambridge get more distance they're going to try and keep keep on it and actually you know really a testament to their strength and their passion that they are pushing and and trying to stay with this and cambridge on course and it's a fairly new thing for them to be racing on the tideway in the boat race but cambridge on course for a, a course record as well so there is that to aim for as they come past chiswick pier and towards the the bandstand will appear on the north bank there down to the left of your picture and from there there's about a mile to go and they will continue to dig continue to to put the foot down and try and achieve as big a victory as possible perhaps in a record time as well what a great sight to see a really strong demonstration of women's rowing they're a fantastic crew they've got good length they've got good timing and I think it's, you know, it's great for our sport to see that. And it's just such a shame that the, the Oxford girls kind of didn't get that opportunity to put their best in. But, you know, they are going to dig in all the way, no question. Well, I'll try and estimate the, uh, the length there of the lead that Cambridge are going to uh, succeed by. Four British rowers, one Irish, one uh, Canadian, one French, one New Zealander, one British New Zealander in Alice White. That is the makeup of the Cambridge boat. And they are the, the women, the one man as well at Cox, as they come past the bandstand, who are going to carry Cambridge to a huge victory today. And Oxford left trailing, getting the muddy water sent down to the dirty pools of the, the leaders, Cambridge. And it all goes back to the start. And again, we don't know how close it would have been. Cambridge came into this race as, uh, as quite strong favourites. So I suspect they might have had too much for the Oxford crew in any case, but we will never know. What a great day for Matthew Holland. He's first year, he's 19. This is the biggest stage he's been on. He's coxed Westminster School to success at finalist at Henley Royal Regatta. And he's won the Nat Schools Regatta, the National Schools races. Uh, and for him, a huge stage to show what he can do. And let's not forget yeah, no, Eleanor Shearer, the coxswain of Oxford, was at school with him, a couple of years older, I believe. That's so right. it'd be very strange for him to, to have looked across and seen her on the start line. And... Getting closer now to Barnes Bridge as we look down on this Cambridge crew who have led and have led by some distance really from the very earliest moments of this race. And at Oxford, again, a psychological test to try and find something, to try and dig in, to try and... Well, make sure that gap doesn't open anymore, but through the central span of Barnes Bridge, go Cambridge, and again, towards the huge numbers of spectators gathered on the, the front of Barnes. And really, is that from the very start of the course, 4.2 miles, almost the whole banks of the, the Thames have been lined by spectators today, looking forward to the men's race to come and enjoying this dominant performance by Cambridge. And it really is that whatever happened at the start, this has been such an impressive performance by Cambridge. Undoubtedly. You could hear Eleanor Shearer and the Oxford crew saying brave and strong. That's what they're trying to do. But this day is all about Cambridge. So past the front now at Mortlake and getting closer to Chiswick Bridge and to victory. And again, that uh, they are just a, a speck in the distant horizon, the Cambridge crew to, to Oxford, who continue to try and produce something. But this victory is going to be, well, not quite that of the uh, 25 lengths of uh, Oxford last year, but not too far away from it. And again, this in, uh, in perfect waters, no excuses for either crew, no hiding place. And, Cambridge continue on their relentless march towards victory. They've been producing something really, been building something really special. Rob Baker has done such a good job, but this crew together, the reserve crew, also full of talent and some future Olympians there. And I think they're really showing it's all about Cambridge and the era for Cambridge is what they're hoping they're starting. They're kicking off today. And as you said, Kath, there's some faces to watch in that Cambridge boat in particular. Melissa Wilson at stroke there and Holly Hill as well in the five seat. Potential future GB senior athletes, I'm sure. As well as Alice White, also under 23 colors and Imogen Grant, a, a lightweight with a lot of promise. So it's exciting for us to see this, this kind of standard, this celebration of what Oxford and Cambridge can, can do with the women rowers and, and really put it on the map. The flotilla behind churns up the water 
and uh, Oxford not too far in front of that flotilla and a long way distant Cambridge who continue continue and not too many pools in the oar remain to take them to the finish but Ashton Brown and Imogen Grant, Claire Lamb, Anna Dawson, Holly Hill, Alice White, Miriam Goodey and Melissa Wilson and Matthew Holland the Cox getting close to victory now and last year Cambridge were well, they were overwhelmed by Oxford and by the Thames itself so different this year on the calmer waters the dark blue run is going to end for the first time since 2012 and for the very first time on the tide with this famous stretch of the River Thames. It is going to be, with a final few pulls in the oar, a light blue win. A calm Thames today as the Cox cries out their names. They've all done it. It is going to be a record time. He's called them to lead victory. And the finish line calls. It is victory for Cambridge in the women's boat race. And what a victory. A record time and a huge margin. And relief for those who have tasted defeat before. And am I how they have made amends. Their opposition had such a dreadful start, but this crew, I think, would have beaten most today. And Oxford, rather tired, certainly dejected, come home a distant, distant second in the 72nd edition of the women's boat race. So difficult for them. I mean, sometimes the boat race and the, the men's boat race, the women's boat race, it's a, it's a good race and the, the contrast between the two crews is clear and you can see it here but today I think for Oxford it'll be doubly painful but that doesn't okay. uh, take away from the joy and the celebrations so richly deserved for Cambridge. There's a lot of hard work that's gone in Cambridge to turn things around from where they've been and I think they probably didn't expect to turn it around in quite that spectacular style but uh, they have. Rob Baker's done such a strong job and they are building something. Uh, you know, they have that new boathouse. They've had some things go their, their direction, go, go the right way. Uh, what it means to Melissa Wilson there in the uh, stroke seat three times. She has lost and now she is a winner in the boat race. And behind her, Miriam Goody. And so too are returning blue who lost last year in Oxford. It is, uh, it's painful and this is humbling because this has, uh, has been a, a, a dreadful day again. All the planning that goes into it and all the practice and wrong from the very start and the dejection is total and it is obvious. And you, again, we're not singling out people because the crew will, will lose as a crew and you see Rebecca Eselstein will get, uh, get comfort from the rest. But uh, you sit under Chiswick Bridge and you think of how wrong it went at Putney Bridge because it was, uh, it was awful. But again, we stress just how strong this Cambridge crew was and uh, how much you think the Oxford might have lost at the start. In the end, it was a, it was a very, very big win for Cambridge. Yeah, undoubtedly a really classy Cambridge crew there. You know, they, they do have some, some great talent there and they're moving really well together, but just really hard to see you know, a race uh, a go that way, really, and, and not to have a, a clean run over the course for both crews. You never really see in other, other sporting events so starkly highlighted the difference between winning and losing because it's just your second place in the boat race, and the boat race is, is nothing at all, and the, the elation and the celebration for for Cambridge. And again, we're stressed because this ends a run of four Oxford victories. And it might be the start of something for Cambridge as well, because as uh, you said, Kath, they've laid down a programme, they've got the, the, the new boathouse, they've got some good funding, as Oxford do, but they have a good programme going forward. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not, you know, they, they won in 2012, but then there was a long gap before that. So it's really been the least successful period in our club's history. And, and that's always painful to, to, any, to any side. And so I think there's a real sense of relief that, you know, we've got some things in place. The boathouse makes a big difference. And uh, with talent like this coming through as well, it's so exciting to put it together. Now, all those who support the Light Blues will be celebrating. And uh, will those celebrations continue through towards the, uh, the men's race? But again, it's just that the pictures say everything.
bit of sustenance being taken on by Holly Hill and Alice White. And again with stress, a record time as well. Sometimes that's dependent on the lack of water coming down off the land, so it can be a little bit of a, a lie, but that was such a strong performance by Cambridge and uh, Oxford again. They will have their uh, post-mortem, their repercussions, and they'll see what they make of it. But we'll uh, hand to Claire. Well, that stunning success for Cambridge in a time of 18 minutes 34 is a new record for the women. The first time Cambridge have been successful here on the Tideway, they beat the record from 2015 by well over a minute. And in fact, their time faster than Cambridge's men recorded last year and faster than Oxford's men recorded in 2014. Obviously, conditions are hugely influential, but a significant marker to go so far under 19 minutes. And for the returning blues, for Ashton Brown, for Holly Hill, for Miriam Goudet, who becomes the first French woman ever to win the women's boat race, uh, for Melissa Wilson as well. Just redemption from their disappointment last year when they barely made it to the finish the water coming on board they kept going they were absolutely determined to finish the race last year and then the 12 months in between all those hours and hours of training with one thing in mind and that was this victory in the women's boat race and they deserve every second of these celebrations and disappointing, Catherine, as it is that Oxford had such a poor start and that it wasn't able to develop into a great race. For Cambridge, it, they have achieved what they set out to do. They have, and I, I, you know, as has been hearing in the commentary, this is not the kind of style, this is not the manner you want to, you want to win in that style, but you don't want to win because of the, the problem that happened at the very start for Oxford. But it takes absolutely nothing away from that Cambridge crew. That Cambridge crew was absolutely superb. The rhythm they had was excellent. The time they've just put down, which is a market that will last a long time now, it, you know, they really should be enjoying the celebrations, as you've said, because they're truly special. Well, Jason Mohammed is down there with the president, the woman who contracted pneumonia after last year's race. How different it must feel right now. Ashton Brown is being mopped, or the crew were mopped alongside you. Jason, take it away. Claire, thank you very much indeed. She's barely out of the boat. The celebrations to my left are utterly incredible here. This means so much to you, Ashton Brown, because last year, I remember you were at tears. What a different interview this year. Uh, definitely the place I want to be this year. Um, couldn't have done it without an amazing squad. Um, we're just waiting to see what Blondie's doing. Hopefully they're doing well too. So I'm just so proud of my squad and so proud of the team this year. Do you remember the scenario last year when we spoke about 20 metres away, you were in tears, the crew were in tears with what happened and what an incredible achievement for you this year. I think just it's just we got to have the race we wanted to have. Um, last year we have felt a bit robbed because we didn't get to race um, and this year I've just had an amazing team with me and we did it right to the end. But what a story Ashton, after last year and the disaster, then you having pneumonia, you've battled back and you are now a victorious president. I mean it's just the team did it, I, I just had an awesome job leading them. Um, couldn't have done it without them. And how did you retain that focus knowing that Oxford were in all sorts of disarray from that start? Um, so we talked about all the scenarios we could have going in and we wanted from that start uh, we were talking down the boat about as big a margin as possible and it wasn't just about crossing the line first it was about making it a real victory and I think we did that we got a huge margin by the end and that was our goal. And what about your crew here? on the left-hand side went the massive roar they gave you when you came home. Uh, they're just a great team. Um, they've been supportive all year. Uh, I had a really tough go this year, but they helped me through it all. So really grateful to them. Very soon, you are going to be spraying champagne around. How does that sound? That sounds pretty good to me. It's my <laughs> third boat race, and I haven't had any champagne I'll, yet. <laughs> I'll let you get there. Thank you very much indeed, Ashton. What an incredible story. And Matthew Holland, the Cox, is alongside me here. Claire, many congratulations, Matthew. How did you retain that rhythm and that focus knowing that Oxford were having such big problems at that very start? We said off from the start that we'd have a very internal focus. We'd just keep our rhythm no matter what happened. And we knew that our rhythm was strong. And so I just reinforced that message. I made sure they stayed on on the catch and they didn't get too confident. We knew that we still had to finish the race. And take us into the camp. How much were you fired up, Matthew, by what happened last year and the devastation in the crew? I mean, it was what just watching the video back before I for that to happen, having put in so much work, would be so horrible. And I sort of felt like I had to make sure that the returners in the crew were able to forget that with a new experience. I wanted to make sure that this really made up for the fact that last year they had such a horrible race. 
and Ashton, there's a lot of modesty there given what she's been through. How influential has she been in this success, Matthew? She's been the most fantastic president. Just her fights and the struggle that she's had to overcome this year has really driven the squad on. And just to think that actually she's leading us through this has been fantastic, especially when things have got tough. Nice, thank you very much indeed. Claire, back to you. Apologies, few problems there on the microphone breakup. But Matthew Holland, there, classically trained singer, he does vocal warm-ups before he starts uh, coxing for for Oxford. Uh, it is just utter despair, and you've got to feel for Rebecca Esselstein. But as Kath Bishop said in in commentary, it's the whole crew. It's the whole crew that upset the balance of the boat, and that is why things can happen. But. It was over almost before it began and Zoe de Toledo is here with me and with Catherine Granger. Let's have another look at the start and actually we're going to be able to hear the Oxford Cox, Ellen Ashira. So Rebecca Esselstein is, is in the four seats, but if we just listen in, you can see the boat's unbalanced. And those sort of five, ten seconds must feel like minutes, Zoe. Yeah, you, you could hear she actually stopped the boat. Easy there is the call we use to stop the boat. So uh, Becky was clearly struggling to get the blade out with the speed of the boat that was still carried from the other seven trying to row. So all seven and others had to stop rowing to allow her to get the blade out the water. And it happens. It happens at the highest level. It happened to one of my crewmates in, at the European Championships a few years ago but just such a shame that it happened so early on in the race and just, you know, the race just didn't, wasn't allowed to really develop fully then. Where I'm so impressed with, with Cambridge, Catherine, is victory is assured. I mean, by this stage, it's going to be very unlikely they can get caught, but they rode on to try and set a record and they've done so. Absolutely, and, and if you think, you know, for this whole team, for both Oxford and Cambridge, they have one race that they prepare for the whole year, it's one race. So even if it's over within the first few metres, they're not going to stop there. You know, for them, anything could happen. Four of them are returning from last year when, you know, the weather caused them to have a really quite horrific experience of the boat race and they had a lot to prove and, and they had a lot to prove that they were one of the best Cambridge boats that have ever been put out for the women's boat race. And to be fair to Cambridge they know what Oxford are feeling right now and it is utter despair and they will console them but let's get a reaction from them and their captain Harriet Austin is with Jason now. Yes, Claire, and Harriet, this is obviously the last thing that you want to do doing an interview on, on live television but what happened at the start, Harriet? Yeah, I mean the start didn't go as we'd, as we'd planned but I think we got it together really well and I'm really really proud of the girls and the, the effort we put in. It was a good race uh, but today was Cambridge's day. And how did you manage to carry on and dig in knowing you are so far behind and you've worked so hard for this area? Well we prepare for every situation, it's obviously not one that we'd want uh, but Ellie did a great job at coxing us and she brought us back together and I'm just uh, pleased we managed to find our rhythm again and get back onto something good. Alan Ashira, can you tell us what happened, what was your view, what happened? Yeah I mean we just had a minor upset on the start, again it's something that we had planned for so we knew how to get back together, we got back on it and as Harris said just happy we managed to find a rhythm and have a race that in the end we could be proud of. Um, it's obviously not the race that we'd have planned, but um, on the day our opponents were just better. I know it's been very difficult for you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, very good of both Eleanor and Harriet to, to talk so eloquently because it is just an utterly depressing, upsetting feeling and, and the contrast is enormous as Andrew Cotter said I don't think there's another sporting event where you, the difference between winning and losing is so great and here the celebrations of Cambridge a, a huge moment for them and and really a, a triumph of investment of long-term planning and of patience Absolutely. I mean, when you see that there, that a lot of work goes into these this sort of one-off race, and and as as both Kath and Zoe sort of said in the commentary, it's been it's been a sort of long, many years planning for Rob, who's coaching the Cambridge crew and the the setup, and they've had a tough few years. So it is lovely to see that that level of celebration, even if the race was you know for them quite a simple, straightforward race. It shows how much it still means to win it.
And there's such a mixture of experience in this boat from those that have raced internationally to Imogen Grant who signed up for a taster session because she wanted to get two free drinks. <laughs> and she knew that if she went along to the to the rowing introduction session, that is what she would get. And Claire Lamb, who She'll go rowed for Ireland <laughs> and was six at the Olympics. I mean, there's just a massive difference. We'll, we'll be rejoining the women for their presentation. Um, very shortly, but uh, just a short while ago, the coin toss for the men's boat race took place as we saw, well actually in the women's race it was irrelevant because it was over before they got to the first bend, but Surrey has proved a popular choice and once again it was the choice of the Oxford president Michael DeSanto who won the toss and chose Surrey. So Oxford winning the toss, choosing Surrey. And you see the two presidents there. It's um, been quite spicy, actually, the build-up to the men's race. We'll be discussing that in more detail because we've got lots of time before the... Well, I say lots of time. We've got about 35 minutes, half an hour, half an hour, round about that. Uh, so they'll be out on the water very shortly. But the presentation is about to take place for the women's boat race. And as I've been talking uh, about the crowds here, the huge support, I think the women's boat race has added to the occasion, to the interest, to the stories that are written as well and also to the understanding that these are full-time students. You know, they work all day long and they train for hours every day as well. And for those that are successful, it's all worth it. For those that aren't, it's pretty painful. Here's Jason. Yes, Claire, thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the great sporting events of the great British sporting calendar. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome your presentation party, the Cancer Research UK 2017 boat races. This is the 72nd women's boat race. Would you please give a very warm welcome to Mitchell Harris, Chief Executive Officer, BNY Mellon Investment Management. Welcome, Mitchell. Andrew Traits Hodge, who will present the trophy and Fergus Murison, the boat race company Race Marshall. First, ladies and gentlemen, the losing crew, Oxford University Women's Boat Club. Would you please welcome Harriet Austin, the captain, in the absence of the injured president, Isabel von Loger. Please also give a very warm welcome to Alice Roberts, Flo Pickles, Rebecca Tewater Norday, Rebecca Esselstein, Chloe Laverack, Jenna Hibbert, Emily Cameron, Cox Eleanor Shearer, and coach for Oxford, Ali Williams. Eight nations represented in the women's crews, Great Britain, Ireland, the United States of America, Canada, Australia, South Africa, New Zealand, and France. Commiserations to Oxford. But ladies and gentlemen, on a fine sunny day here, such contrasting difference to last year. The winners of the 2017 Women's Boat Race, Cambridge University Women's Boat Club, led by Imogen Grant, Claire Lamb. Put your hands together for Anna Dawson, for Holly Hill. Alice, Alice White, White. Miriam Gooday, Melissa Wilson, the, the Cox, Cox, Matthew Holland, Holland. <laughs> head coach Rob Baker. Here comes, Here comes Rob. And what a story after last year, the heartache. She then contracted pneumonia, and here she is, about to lift the trophy. Cambridge University Women's Boat Club President, Ashton Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Your winners, ladies and gentlemen. And before, and before the drink starts flowing, Ashton, do you want to take this moment to say thank you to the crew and thank you to the team and all the people who played such a massive role in bringing you here today? I think it's a thank you to everyone. This crew is amazing, but this year we've had just an amazing team and such great support from everyone. We couldn't have done it without 
everyone that showed up to trial this fall, all our alumni supporters, all our friends and family. Um, it's really been a giant team effort, and I'm so privileged to lead this group. Thanks. Your social media accounts have been saying how much you've been looking forward to it as well. Just take us inside the camp as well the night before. What was it like last night? How confident were you? Uh, we didn't want to be overconfident going into it, but we all year have had a lot of laughs together, so we were telling some bad jokes last night. Rob cooked us a great dinner, um, and we just had a good time. Uh, it was it's just a lot of fun with these guys. And Rob, how are you feeling? Pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, we, we've got a, an amazing, we've just seen our, our second crew win. These guys are absolutely amazing. Um, we knew how fast we were. It's about executing today. And, um, you know, they were, they were ruthless in the way they executed. And that's what we've been training for all year. Let the celebrations begin. Cambridge University, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next, can our novice rowers learn from their Olympic teammates? Dancing has nothing on this. This will be the toughest competition of my life. Having inspired their first victory in years,